Hello, everyone. We're here today to talk about quantum crypto, what is available and where the market is. And we're glad to have here today my colleague, Angelo Fazillo, Director of Strategic Partnerships uh, with our quantum partner, Isara, uh, who's uh, one of the leading experts in the quantum crypto industry. And he's here today to help us understand this critical and emerging market. So let's get started with a short history and background of quantum, including some of the challenges addressing organizations who are dealing with innovation, cloud, IoT, and digital transformation, and some of these impacts. So to start with, let's get a little history. Sure, that sounds good, Dave. Thanks for uh, having us. I Sarah is uh, uh, very happy to be a, a partner of Talus and uh, join you and uh, the client base on the journey to uh, to Quantum Safe. And uh, we thought we'd start off. We have a few. Um, slides to uh, kick off the discussion. So I'll um, start here. So just just generally speaking, um, there is a ton of good, um, great content available um, on quantum, quantum computing, um, how quantum computing is going to sort of revolutionize um, the compute industry. And the different things that quantum computing um, is going to be able to do that a traditional computer um, can't do. I'm by no means um, an expert in the field. I'm on the business side, but at a, at a high level, I mean, just um, so everybody kind of understands, um, quantum computers um, will be able to solve problems that traditional computers um, don't solve. And today there are a number of nations, um, virtually all of big tech um, that are investing very heavily in uh, making sure that this materializes and that this happens. Right now, it's moving from theoretical to practical. And then, you know, there's the next challenge, which is going to be moving from practical to actual commercial use cases. But there will be a time, it isn't a matter of if, it is just sort of more of a matter of when, uh, when, like, you know, companies will be able to um, get uh, you know, shared quantum computing services in the cloud and, and use those services to improve things like drug design, machine learning, um, big data, um, optimization for financial modeling, optimization for traffic modeling, all sorts of really cool and exciting stuff. Now, one thing um, as well, and it's kind of why we're here today and why Isara and Talus is partnering is, one of the big problems that quantum computers will be able to solve is factoring, is complex math. And uh, as all of you know, complex math is behind the, um, the algorithms um, that is used to protect pretty much you know, all layers of our technology infrastructure. Um, crypto is pretty much everywhere in the technology stack. And uh, that crypto, specifically asymmetric crypto, is at threat using something called Shor's algorithm with the right quantum computing computer in like the wrong hands. So, you know, it's, it's very important that customers start to, and when I say customers, customers of ours, customers of Talus, we kind of mean anyone from um, an enterprise to government um, should really start to prepare for migrating their cryptography so that it's, it's quantum safe. And Angela, to your point, you know, we're really looking at digital transformation here, right? I mean, at the end of the day, everybody is moving to a digitally transformed business. So in effect, when we talk about customers, we're literally talking to anyone that's going to be here, you know, 10 years from now, they've got to start worrying about this today. And one yeah, of the things yeah. that, like, you know, yeah, one of the things yeah. I think we've all seen was, you know, 20 years ago, uh, Y2K, was a big issue, right? That people had to move from old systems to new ones. And it sounds like when quantum, we're seeing something similar. Can you describe this in a little more detail? Yeah, and you know, Y2K, there's a common term in the quantum industry, Y2Q. The difference between Y2K and Y2Q is Y2K, we knew when it was gonna happen, but we didn't know what was gonna happen. For Y2Q, it's, it's the opposite. We know what's gonna happen. Um, we just don't know when it is actually gonna happen. So what we advise, most um, organizations now is to focus on crypto agility, which essentially means getting themselves ready. And that's different depending upon the type of organization that you're in. 
But for example, if you are an organization that builds long life devices, satellites, infrastructure, um, cars, um, anything that has to be in the field for a long period of time, those solutions that you are shipping out now um, need to be quantum safe essentially now because you know they're going to be in life for the next 10 or 15 years and that they will be susceptible to a threat during that time. So we're encouraging um, you know, a lot of the preparation to begin through POCs for those companies to understand the algorithms, understand how they will perform in their chips, in their memory, in their communication, in their sensors, so that their next sort of product life cycle will have quantum safe algorithms embedded. That's kind of one place. And, and the other place is for, for large enterprise, financial institutions, governments, anybody with a very complex PKI, I think we all know that it's extremely difficult and complex to, to migrate and to upgrade cryptography across the board. So starting now and putting together those plans is a really critical, uh, important element to the whole uh, piece of the puzzle. Right, and I guess like Y2K, to your point, you know, people didn't really think about that when they started building computer systems. But today, we can start planning, as you say, for crypto agility and quantum now, get it right. And by the way, as you say in this slide, people have to start worrying about this stuff today to get it right, you know, 10, 20 years from now, when we know that those uh, Shores algorithms can be broken. So how are we approaching this from uh, maybe a more specific, Angelo? Can we describe in a little more detail how we're approaching how to yeah. help them yeah, solve well, One thing um, that we often get um, asked about quite a lot is, you know, when will, how do you know what is going to be safe? What are the right algorithms to use, et cetera? Um, right now, NIST is going through a very detailed process, a selection process. ICERA, as an example, follows that process very closely. Um, we NIST will sort of lay the foundation of what are the right algorithms and to be used for the right different use cases. Um, so it's a matter for companies to do a few different things, understand their infrastructure, follow the process that NIST has, uh, work with vendors who are also following that same process so that when the time is right, they can move from, you know, early evaluation to POC to production. So ICERA um, at its core has a quantum safe toolkit. That quantum safe <clears throat> toolkit basically allows developers to take those algorithms and easily implement those in their environment. Um, you know, one of the partnerships that we have, one of our uh, strongest partnerships are with Talos, and that's why kind of we're here today with, with Dave. Um, Talos has taken that toolkit and it's embedded it into um, its HSM and um, a customer can then um, take that HSM and um, start to use the, the algorithms in a number of different um, use cases. And that's kind of what we're uh, um, encouraging clients to do. Look at things like code signing, document signing, certificates, smart cards, and um, look at ways to start to prepare to make those elements of their, of their infrastructure quantum safe. And that's what sort of Talos and ICERA uh, work together on in order to do. And one of the things I think is, is interesting is we talk about crypto agility, people are probably familiar with a hardware security module being either a physical device that's stored on premise uh, safely or run in the cloud. And as you say, well, if we've got crypto agility, what happens if different crypto algorithms become ratified by NIST? How do we evolve if those change over time? And one of the things that ISAR and Talos have done is have what's called a, a functionality update to the HSM to support those different um, algorithms, for, uh, quantum safe algorithms over time and as part of the ISAR toolkit. And then leverage those, as we say, into these different partners uh, like DigiCert for code signing, document signing, uh, public key infrastructure so you can issue quantum safe keys today and use them down the road as well. So let me ask this though. I'm sure going through a lot of people's minds, what about NIST and this certification process? I'm hearing there's a, a number of candidates. Angela, can you describe a little more detail how that's going, who might win, and how does yeah, that's, customers think about this? That's a good question. And I think um, you know we all have to keep in mind that it is um, going to be a continually evolving process. 
um, we're all going to learn uh, what algorithms are uh, the best algorithms for the best use cases. And then we'll all sort of efficiently use those algorithms in the best way possible. And NIST is sort of the, you know, the, the leader to um, sort of uh, put those standards together for us so then we can follow suit. So what I mean, what ICERA uh, does, this is kind of a, you know, a, a good slide that covers it is um, we take the uh, the NIST candidates and, and NIST has gone through a selection process. Um, you know, the, the selection is getting narrower and narrower um, Then even within the algorithms, um, things will, will change. Um, so we have, you know, uh, extensive researchers who follow that process, um, look at the algorithms, um, figure out the best way to optimize it, and then basically put it in a in a kit so that developers um, don't have to do all of that work and they can make it, it makes it easy for developers to then go and use those algorithms in the products that they're trying to bring to market so i think the you know with a, a talus functional module on an hsm the icera toolkit kind of what you're getting is ongoing um, support um, and an ongoing sort of commitment to the evolution of our products um, as the nist process gets finalized and even after finalization as it changes um, we can ensure that sort of our toolkit will always have those latest and greatest changes and make it easy for customers to evolve their products the best thing to do though you know right now is to start is to, to take certain algorithms um, work with parties like us or open source or a bit of both and to start to test, to start to understand how they perform within your environment, within your product. Um, so you get the familiarization and you can more easily and more confidently put a, put a plan in place to, uh, to go to market. A good, a good example of that is um, probably right here actually, is code signing. We probably find, I don't know, code signing to be the most common use case today, um, you know, if you take anyone who has a long life device, um, if you are in the infrastructure business and you have um, things that are gonna be in the field for 10, 15 years, um, you know that they are going to be susceptible to a looming threat. And you would wanna take something like our toolkit and start to um, embed those algorithms into the different elements of your sort of overall code signing solution. Right, so we work with Talus um, so that your HSM can be enabled with those algorithms. You might have a, a code signing service, internal or external. Um, you would want to make sure that that service um, is enabled with the algorithms. If um, you're at the point where that service and eventually you will be um, a certificate authority, like a DigiCert, for example, or um, your internal um, certificate um, services, um, you want to make sure that they understand the algorithms. And then finally, you know, the verification of those algorithms on the actual end device itself. So we kind of look at this as sort of the four different components in the total solution that you would want to make quantum safe. And what uh, Dave and I have both found, because we've been now um, talking to a lot of enterprises over the last year or two, is, is typically where you, one would start is with the HSM um, and getting a, an HSM into some sort of POC environment um, to host the algorithms and to start the process off. That's a great example, Angelo. And, you know, as, as a lot of people are aware, you know, code signing has been around for a couple of decades now. Organizations are improving their processes to make them more um, robust, if you will. And, you know, there's been a number of very high uh, profile issues around the code signing process, or whether it's authentication to that process, securing the keys with that process. But uh, there, as I say, there's been a lot of issues. And this is one of the use cases that's, you know, as companies become more digital focused on services, software, cloud native um, containers, they have to worry about protecting those digital assets in a very secure way. And, you know, code signing has been around for a long time. And with ISARA, what we're trying to do is ensure that not only with the, today's crypto, they can secure their digital assets, they can also do this in a secure way uh, in a crypto agile world with quantum. And this is really part of our whole modern HSM and modern story at Talos as, as we help our 
our critical customers on their path to digital transformation. So let's take a little bit uh, closer look now, I guess, at, uh, at one question that I think a lot of people have. Uh, and Angela, I know you, know you don't control this process, but as you say, ISAR and your team are very close to the team. But if you had to guess, is there a high level time frame that you anticipate NIST finalizing some of these these details for us around the is it is it a year out is it two years out? Yeah, NIST is NIST is already making tons of process uh, progress right now. They've issued a stateful or a special publication on stateful hash based algorithms. Um, stateful hash based algorithms are uh, really good for code signing. Um, so there's you know they the process evolves, but you'll see updates in between 2022 and 2024. Um, and you can expect a lot of finalization to occur within that period. Um, I think, you know, it could happen in, 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 in pieces versus all at once. Um, but the good news is, is that progress is, is there. And what we're sort of kind of encouraging is that in like, you know, you, you look at that process between now and 2026, you really should have everything ready and underway um, and being able to execute uh, because, you know, thereafter five or 10 years after that, um, you know, the, the threats um, could really be more than just the conversation that you're having right now, but we can start to see some, some real examples. So it's best to be prepared. Great, and it, and to your point, the first link that we're going to share with you is our crypto agility risk assessment tool, and this was designed for CISOs to to be able to run through a an assessment in ten minutes online and calculate their organization's risk profile. You know, someone running, you know, building cars or planes or trains may have a longer assessment than someone building software services, but in either case it's vital now to take an assessment. And then of course, the second phase is to, as you say, try this out as a POC with the ISARA toolkit that we can use with our, our Talas Luna HSMs running the, uh, the Quantum Safe Crypto, plug that into uh, third-party applications like a DigiCert PPI to create applications like code signing and have quantum crypto safe uh, uh, code signing solutions. So thanks again for joining us today on this talk, Angela, as I say, ISAR is a critical partner of Talos as we, we move to this uh, agile crypto world and we're going to be building solutions now and for the next decade to help secure companies as they transform their businesses digitally. This has been part of our modern HSM campaign and hope you've enjoyed this. As I said, there's lots more information we can share with you if you click on those links and please feel reach out if you've got questions or ideas. I want to thank every, uh, Angela for joining us today and hope uh, this uh, webinar was useful. Thanks for having us, Dave. Take care. Take care, everybody.